Jonathan Lee Bridges investigates the father of Madison Mogan speaks. He spoke on Christmas Eve, and I'm going to share with everyone what he had to say. This is the father to Madison Mogan, one of the four victims that were found brutally stabbed inside a home in Moscow, Idaho, during the early morning hours of November 13th, 2022. Police have made no arrests. They haven't publicly identified any suspect. They haven't even found the murder weapon, which was a knife. And they're looking for the occupants of a white Hyundai Elantra. They want to speak to it, of this ve drivers of this vehicle that was police think were in the area and have critical information or maybe involved with this case. But let's talk about Madison Mogan's father, Ben Mogan. He spoke on Christmas Eve, and I'm going to share with you what he said, and then we will discuss. Check it out. This was an article that came out on Christmas Eve by the Spokesman Review. She was living the life that she deserved. Maddie Mogan's father braces for first Christmas without her. It was a normal Sunday for Ben Mogan. He had taken himself out to see a movie November 13th when Karen Laramie, the mother of his daughter, Madison Mogan, called. He texted her and said he'd call in a minute. But then Ben Mogan's mother called. Those two things never happened back to back, he said. Just come over, his mother said. I just had a feeling it had to do with Maddie, Ben Mogan said. On that drive over, I was thinking all these terrible things that I was preparing for, and none of them prepared me for what they actually told me. Maddie Mogan, her best friend, Kaylee, their roommate, Zana, and Carnoodle's boyfriend, Ethan Chapin, were found stabbed to death in the girls' home near the University of Idaho campus. Moscow police have yet to find their killer. Ben Mogan called Laramie. We didn't even know what to say to each other. We just both were sobbing. We just cried together on the phone, I guess. There's just no words for any of that. Mogan and Laramie were together for about five years. They lived in Oregon when Maddie was born. They moved to Cordy Lane. Eventually, the two split up, but maintained a good relationship as Maddie grew up. She was smart and funny, Mogan said of his daughter, a real go-getter. As a child... She was easy to be around, never getting into too much trouble. Everyone loved Maddie, Mogan said. As she was in the room, she would just shine. The Mogan family was close, often connecting through music. Everyone would get together with their instruments over the holidays. During his darkest and most difficult times, Mogan would think about his daughter and how proud he was of her. She inspired him, he said. Now more than six weeks into the investigation, Mogan said it's hard to move forward without knowing who killed his daughter. There were so many questions that I figured would be answered, and we're still waiting, Mogan said. Investigators have gone above and beyond to keep Mogan in the loop. One of the lead investigators calls him every day, telling him if there was anything new and answers questions. Mogan said, if they don't connect for a couple of days due to Mogan's work schedule, the investigator worries and will call Mogan's family and make sure he's okay. He said, if the investigator has a day off, he'll make sure someone calls Mogan or will call him anyway. On the day of the vigil in Moscow for four students, Mogan said investigators spent three hours talking to him. The updates helped Mogan stay away from the online speculation and gossip that have um enveloped the case. It's hard for me to read all of these articles, Mogan said. I can get all my news about it right from the investigators, and I don't have to try to drudge through all this misinformation. That misinformation is hurtful, Mogan said, but he understands that's the nature of the world today. I just have to take the higher road on that kind of stuff or else it will be damaging to my well-being. I mean, it's hard enough as it is, Mogan said. I'm just trying to get through these days one at a time. While the last six weeks without answers have been excruciating, excruciating, Mogan said he has had full confidence the killer will be caught. From the very beginning, I've known the people don't get away with these things these days, Mogan said. There's too many things that you can get caught up on, like DNA and videos everywhere. This isn't something that people get away with. That goes unsolved. Due to the high-profile nature of the case, investigators have the best experts willing to lend a hand, Mogan said. Investigators have said they're using resources from across the country, especially the 
FBI. I have to just know that they know what they are doing, and if they don't, they know someone that does. Mogan said of investigators, Mogan is thankful investigators are willing to work around the clock, even though even during the holidays, to bring closure and justice for his family. While they wait for answers, Mogan is getting ready to celebrate the first Christmas without their, his daughter, then days later attend her funeral. Extended family is coming into town for the holiday and the service, which Mogan said will be help. But it's a lot of mixed emotions. He just gets he just keeps thinking about how proud he is of Maddie. I'm so proud to be able to say that she was my daughter and what she was doing with her life and when she was headed. She was living that life she deserved. Coming from the spokesman review, here's a picture of Maddie when she was a baby. So praying for the Mogan family, praying for the Laramie family. Laramie family, it seems like Ben Mogan uh, had a child uh, with um, Karen Laramie. And as the article said, you know, they were together for five years, lived in Oregon, and then they split. I feel so bad for both families. You know, they get the news and they just want answers. Uh, a couple things that stood out in that interview was that Ben Mogan gets updated regularly almost every day. I think every day, you know, by investigators. Investigators speak with him every day. And that's quite contrary to what we're hearing about Kaylee's father, Steve Gonzalez. Uh, the Gonzalez family's not getting contact or getting lack of information or there's a rift going on between Kaylee's father, Kaylee's family, and the police. But Ben Mogan said he's 100% confident in the police. He pretty much praised them in this article and said he's in frequent contact with them. Um, the lead investigator and the, the authorities are contacting him regularly with updates. So that's a different relationship between the police and um, – Madison's fa family to police and Kaylee's family. What's your thoughts on that? What's your thoughts on, you know, he's speaking, um, Ben, Ben Mogan, Ben Mogan, you know, he spoke at the memorial, devastated family is devastated and they want answers. They got confident, confidence based off technology. Like he said this day, DNA and surveillance that will help solve this case. He said that investigators are around they got investigators around the country trying to find answers here. So praying for that family, praying for all the families, praying for the community. I'll give you more updates when other people speak. Subscribe to my channel, like, hit the notification button. I cover true crime. I give you up-to-date analysis. Um, it's good that he spoke, trying to you know get more insight about how Madison grew up, sharing with everyone. Everyone be safe. God bless. I'll be posting more videos soon. Stay tuned.